Welcome back to live action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And after a week away, we are back today. And it's been the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi this last sort of couple of weeks. Everyone's been celebrating it, going to see it at the cinema. Um, we've already covered Return of the Jedi on the show. So we mm -hmm. thought, why don't we talk about the deleted scenes? Um, these are the ones, I believe they were on the Blu-ray release, but they're we're talking about the ones that are available for everyone on Disney Plus, just for yeah. these. Um, there might be and some I put the In the description there. below, I have a YouTube link. I just grabbed one that I thought was good. Um, it's missing the Rebel stuff, but are you really missing the Rebel stuff? <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, we were yeah. away last week, though, so in case people aren't following uh, Invincipod, our podcast that we do about Invincible whenever we can, whenever there's anything to talk about, uh, go and follow that link. Um, maybe maybe we'll get you to read or watch Invincible if you haven't before. Uh, and if you already have, why aren't you following that? Um, so that's why we weren't here last week, but it is good to be back. It's been nice. To, it was nice to have a little bit of a break as well, I thought. Um, after yeah, after the Mando was. season. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. To, to yeah, have a, just... a little bit of a week away to sort of digest everything it's been good yeah yeah i always get so much joy out of doing those invincipods yeah yeah the you were buzzing invincible, you've been buzzing all week about yeah, it the the invincible fan base I think it's a legitimate it fan base i don't know anyone who's complained about anything but that's i think that's the thing with invincible it's it's such a smaller scale that the people that yeah, are talking about so. it are the people that are liking it whereas you know they, it's just that extrapolation of out. You you sort of blow it up bigger and you make it bigger and bigger and bigger and you're going to find that the same people are going to complain about the same stuff. But yeah, we'll see we're, we're just lucky with Star Wars that, that everyone wants to talk about it at all times. I say lucky, probably not lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but I haven't seen these in a long time. I haven't seen these in years. I think the last time I watched these was probably when the Blu-ray box set came out. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely went through them and watched them all then. I think I'd and that's when you that's that. when you consumed like like 28 hours of bonus features and that's it, just it. Got lost in the shuffle yeah it's, it's like I, I i know what they all are but like i couldn't remember the moff jergerod stuff at all i, I was, didn't remember I was that at all really surprised and really pleasantly surprised by that stuff um uh, so did you go and see return of the jedi this weekend at all no no uh i went no. i went with liz on sunday night um it was really great. It's always great seeing it in the big screen. Uh, I saw it last year, if you guys remember. Um, me and Ed went to see it with the live orchestra, which was a sort yeah. of a completely different experience because you're sort of half watching the movie. You know the movie inside and out, but I'm watching the band play. I'm watching this orchestra do their thing because that's what you're going for, really, when you go to see a film like that. Um, so obviously it's Return of the Jedi. It's, we all know it inside and out. But I was watching with Liz, who hadn't seen it in years has definitely seen it a few times over the years like grew up like all of us watching star wars um her dad was a fan more of a star trek fan but definitely a fan um but she it, i was getting sort of joy out of moments like join mon mothma's speech she's like oh my god that's, that's her because she watched and loved andor um, and we're going through Rebels now in sort of anticipation for Ahsoka. So there's bits and bobs that are coming up that she was picking up that she probably had never really noticed or cared about before. So it's... They say, it's do fun. they call her Mon Mothma in? No. So she knows, she even though it's a different actress, mm -hmm. she knows that... It's she she didn't bat an eyelid. There was no, there was no, there was no... Because you and I have both sort of come down on the thing now where it's like, where we're getting um what's her name in uh ahsoka we've seen it in the trailer like she's basically she's playing mon mothma genevieve from O'Reilly. yeah genevieve yeah that's it um we've seen her now she's playing mon mothma older than the return of the jedi mon mothma 
which is a more medical she's... Unless it's an uh, older... Do we see her in person or is it hologram? I think it's... Oh, it might be a hologram, yeah. It could be an older transmission. doesn't matter. But if it's still... If they just use her, that's fine. I think so. And, and, and in the same way that I have come around and don't have a problem with it being Hayden at the end, in the Force Ghosts, mm -hmm. it's one of those changes that... I don't think they will, but if they ever did want to go back and tweak and change and put Genevieve O'Reilly in there... I don't think I'd have a problem with it. It's, right. it's no disrespect to the original actress. It's just for the continuity sake of it all. Like it's right. it's nice. It's the emperor. Yeah, exactly. The same as mentioning yeah. the emperor in Star Strikes Back. Yeah. Um, and it's it's great, but I really I really liked watching it with someone who hasn't seen it in a long time and sort of had some fresh ideas. Her thoughts on it coming out were like, "Wow!" Like all of the aliens were really gooey in in 1983 and i and i was watching it and yeah seeing it projected on a big screen you really get a sense that like the ilm creature shop were really really like it, the how they made things look textured and real and alive was just you know liquid and jab is just drooling and snotty the whole time and it, it, they're things that you forget when you're watching it at home or however you're sort of just consuming it normally it's that you really see when it's on the big screen um yeah. loved it loved it it was really good um but it's now fun to see some of the other stuff that we haven't seen well i haven't seen in a long time and can i just say like i wish they were all in so Almost every single thing i wish was back in the movie would you so that's the, my biggest takeaway with watching these scenes was a lot of them aren't uh, there's a couple of them that are deleted scenes but then there's a couple of them that are definitely alternate scenes or extended versions of scenes uh, right. more than full on just deleted so the the one in particular the the alternate scene is the, the when they're leaving Tatooine the sort of the the sandstorm which i believe was yeah. the first thing they were shooting for the film if i remember the story right um i've got the making of book back here i could just go and have a look but if mm. i remember the story right that was the first thing they were shooting and they were plagued with this massive sandstorm um, they needed to keep production rolling. Maybe they were behind, and that's when why they had to go with it and couldn't reshoot it. Um, but yeah, that that scene, dialogue and everything, it's it's exactly the same as the scene when the Falcon's flying off this way and Luke and his X-wing is flying off this way. Yeah, it's the same dialogue. Uh, the scene is cooler though because in in Return of the Jedi, we don't see a fully built Falcon anywhere. No, there's matte paintings, and like that's it. Yeah, and then the interior set, but there isn't. So, yeah, like, there isn't the exterior. You're losing a lot of production value because the Falcon, and even though this is like really, really shitty prints, uh, the the Falcon and the X Wing look amazing in the sandstorm. And also, was there a Y Wing? I think when they're first walking up, I think that there's a nose of a Y Wing. Um, I didn't. I know. See that. It, I I. I would need to go back again, but I'm pretty sure that there's the nose of a Y-Wing, which if you think about who's there and the times that they get there, because when we see the wide shot in the, the other deleted scene, you see Luke's X-Wing and the Falcon uh, sort of down in yeah. that sort of valley that they're parked in. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw a Y-Wing, so it could be that Layers. someone else arrived later. Yeah, Leia arrived later maybe, or someone else arrived at a different sort of, point in time I must, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's Leia's yeah Leia because Leia Chewie, right Chewie showed up in the Falcon mm -hmm. with Lando yeah Luke in his X-Wing how did how did Leia get there yeah if if yeah. If, if Princess Leia flew in a, a Y-Wing that's amazing that'd be awesome that's to see. really amazing to me yeah um because I love Y-Wings I, really... I might I might be completely mistaken and it's just the nose of an X-Wing that we see, but I'm I'm fairly certain we see them walk past a Y-Wing um the front of uh which is super cool. Y-wings are always fun to see. Well if they if it if there was a Y-Wing, they left it behind yeah. along with uh Luke's ladder. Like how many of how many ladders are just everywhere? Just disposable ladders, yeah. Right. It's, it's not great. <laughs> they do I'm trying to they... remember there was a map painting, and I don't remember seeing a map painting of with with the y wing in it let me let me see if i can find the map painting if you yeah. want to vamp a little bit um, um the rest of the scene though plays out the the dialogue is exactly the same it's the um meet you back at the fleet hurry you know 
uh, Han, there's the the only extended bit is Han saying, why don't you leave that thing behind and come with us on the Falcon? It's a lot faster. Um, but Luke has, uh, he has something to do. And that's, that's obviously go see Yoda. It's just more of a dynamic scene. I think if they'd, if I like, I get why they didn't use it. The, the sandstorm was really bad, but if they'd been it able to, awesome, sort of, it did look awesome. And I think if they'd maybe been able to sort of turn the weather, the uh, like actual naturally occurring weather down by like 10, 15%, it would have been totally usable. Um, Cause you can ADR all the dialogue. That's not a problem, but it's just a case of they can't see a thing. There's, there's just them stumbling through the dust. Um, it definitely adds a lot of texture though. Um, yeah. It was cool. And it just, it, it makes their, a, a, I say escape. It makes them leaving Tatooine just as, as I said, more dynamic than just you see them flying off. It, I get the transition of it. it it's sort of probably more concise. Um, oh, where have found it? There you go. Yeah, yeah that's that's the matte painting from from the other side. But, but because R two and three PO are there, mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything. They get sent first. Yeah, yeah. Then Leia may come in after she's busy. Mm-hmm. So it could have been a Y wing. Um, we don't know. Yeah, it's cool. And it's yeah. It would I guess it would just sort of explain why they go in the order that they go um still doesn't explain necessarily why luke just sort of hangs back for last but he's got yeah that kind of makes his lightsaber. It, it makes well yeah i mean it makes more well no because his lightsaber is done yeah. and he's got to stick it in r2 mm. oh yeah that's a good point so yeah, it kind of yeah. it kind of exposes the plan a little bit more but there's something that i really like about this scene uh a couple things first of all getting to see a lightsaber built we still haven't seen it in live action and it Mm -hmm. drives me nuts i feel like there's so many opportunities to to see that happen there's a there's a droid in the ahsoka trailer the um the one the the doctor who guy um yeah who's been around for like thousands and thousands of years who in in the clone wars is the guy who helps them build lightsabers so maybe maybe we'll see someone building a lightsaber Yeah. So there's that, which is interesting. And then this plays off or plays off of Empire Strikes Back, where it's this um, Vader is still reaching out to Luke Mm -hmm. uh, through the Force. Yeah. um, Which which I like and which kind of sets up The Last Jedi. Like, I guarantee you, Ryan Johnson saw this, thought, thought this was a cool idea and sort of brought it back into star wars um because we only get a glimpse of it at the beginning of um return of the or at the the end of uh end of end of empire it's it's luke's on the falcon it's the father son yeah it's really nice to have this sort of through line and also like this feels more like a sequel with that in it like it's Mm. like oh this is where we it reminds you where you left off it's not just a, a new episode telling a different story right yeah Right. I like that it's still a reminder that Vader is out there and he's been bugging Luke like but that's it. Non-stop. It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, if that's if that has been what's been happening, it's 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 really interesting. Um yeah. obviously it's a deleted scene, so things aren't sort of considered strictly canon anymore. They they'll pull them when they can. Um and the Marvel comics have been telling what's happening in between films. That's sort of what they've done since Marvel right. took over. Um, so we've been getting a lot of what's been going on with Luke and he's he's been struggling with his training and sort of basically having to self-train at this point in time. A lot happens. They've, they've packed a lot into that six months, if it is still just considered six months. Um, probably too much. He's he's had a whole yellow lightsaber that he's only just lost recently. And I think they're, they're getting up to the point where he's going to come and construct his nice green one um, yeah. in those books. Um, mixed feelings about it, personally. Um, mm. but I, I get, I guess the only downside of the seeing the Luke early is again, it's exposing the plan. Seeing Luke have another lightsaber takes away the reveal of boom. Luke has a lightsaber. Last time you saw him, he didn't have a hand. Um, I guess. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's one of those things where you've seen it. 
And he had a lightsaber on the poster. It's like, yeah, there's never going to be a surprise yeah. that, hey, Luke Skywalker has a lightsaber in 1983. I don't think anyone was going in thinking, oh, what's he going to do now? Um, but if it came out now, people would complain, well, where do you get the lightsaber from? So, mm -hmm. you, you, I mean... It's... It, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, if things come out now. Because if it came out now with this scene, oh, what a, what a waste. What a, like, why would they show it off early? Um, it would be so much yeah. cooler if they did it uh, during the fight. And then, yeah, as you yeah. said, where do you get the other lightsaber? We need, like, three novels and two comic book series just about the lightsaber being built. I was curious to know, like, why? Why it was deleted? What was the thought process with Lucas to, to delete it? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, it, it, it's it, efficiency. It, like, I would think just that, sort of trying to tighten it up. Painting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they ditched matte paintings. They built that or rebuilt, probably, the Falcon exterior yeah. and that's they, completely they, out of the movie just just the, the same side that we see all the time in the other two um right but yeah i mean it was empire strikes back they had a full one built am i right yeah because they're up on top of it and everything yeah. in echo base um so it could just be that they sort of saved the section of it like by the the landing ramp and literally in the movie now you get the map paintings mm -hmm. at uh is it, is it home one and then you get the cockpit. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And that's, and that's we know that they had the rest of the interiors as well, which is, yeah. is really interesting. And that's what yeah. I think the biggest loss. Um, should we jump ahead and talk about those bits? Because we're talking about the Falcon. So the other scene, sure. one of the other scenes was, um, it's listed as just uh, the, the missing pilots or the missing rebels. The lost rebels. The lost, the lost rebels. Um, so the, it's a nine minute deleted scene, but it's just really, it's a collection of takes of a bunch of different rebel pilots in cockpits. Um, you get a couple of uh, lady pilots, which is nice to see. And it was it's mm -hmm. proof that, you know, yes, we do only see white guys. I know, mostly white guys in Return of the Jedi. There is a couple of people of color. Um, but yeah. it's you do still only see dudes. But the intention was always that, you know, it's, it's the Rebel Alliance but, is more diverse, especially at this point. The A-Wing pilot in here is a woman yep. and she's in the movie dubbed yeah. by a man. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. It is weird. It's, it's, it's always weird. been weird. And I mean, the, the first one, like her, her line delivery is pretty flat, but they're all they're really going for here is just the plates. Like you get that when they're, when you see the Mon Calamari later on, like they're giving him like jokey right. lines just because you can put ever, whatever dialogue you want under it. it it's just, Right. Yeah, it's it, you just need the plates, um, and then yeah. you can go in and put a bigger reaction. But sh like the the they're not the best pilots. They obviously went with who they thought you'd got the best reactions, the best line readings, and stuff out of. Um, but it was nice seeing sort of some more diverse faces in there. Um, I like that there was an older lady. I thought that was really interesting. She definitely seemed older than the rest yeah. of the pilots. Um, and like she she misses a couple of lines, but she, in the same way that Harrison Ford would always be like, George, you can write this shit, but you can't say it. She's probably thinking, what the hell did they just say to me? Like, I'm I'm trying to repeat the words back, but they mean no, like they make no sense to me. Um, but it was it was really fun to see. It's the sort and of thing now they're, that they're, like well, they're wearing helmets. I don't know if the speakers are in the helmets, but uh, yeah, but can't I, be. I, easy. Could be easy Can't to be hear. Easy. No, definitely not. <laughs> Especially not with the hydraulics and everything moving and they're yeah. being shaken around. Um yeah, it's it's fun to see, like obviously you've just got one guy operating the, the targeting computer and just moving it, and they've been instructed like whenever this comes out, just sort of have a look through it and things. Uh you know, look look around your cockpit. they you get they're getting some stage direction, but it's mostly just being fed lines. Um and all the lines that they were being fed are stuff from the first death star battle in a new hope yes uh which yeah. is is fun because it's like all right dogfight death star we don't know exactly how it's going to work in terms of framing it and when these are going to be used here's some generic lines from star wars dogfights yeah um, i was looking up to see if i could find it but there's there's also shots of the interior Fal interior falcon <clears throat> where you see the gunner at the uh, one of the stations, the gunner, yeah. the gunner post, General the Kraken, Falcon. it's the head of Alliance uh, intelligence. He's like the the anti ISB. If you've read the so that 
So they use one of those. There's there's a, two that I could think of. I couldn't find either. Um, deleted scenes that are used in the Return of the Jedi coloring book. Oh, great. And one cool. one is the gunner station. Yeah. One I think if you if you look up uh Aaron Kraken on, on Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure that the shot of him is or General Kraken or whatever he is. Um I'm pretty sure that his his picture on there is or at least used to be uh of him in the the, the gunner seat. But you see him in the movie, he's sat behind Lando um in the cockpit for a lot of the, the battle. So when I look up Aaron Kraken, it it uh, auto fills coloring book. Oh, okay, that's cool too. <laughs> so, like let me that. See if I can find it. Yeah. See in there. Um, not, there's a younger guy. Clear. I've I've been going back through because they've been doing they've been re releasing a lot of the old books in there, like the Ultimate Legends collection. So and I've read the X Wing books so many times that I was like, huh, they've done unabridged audiobooks of these. Like, let me check it out. I had some Audible credits to use. So I checked out the um, the audiobooks of the early Rebels books where Kraken and his son, Pash, is in them. And I'm guessing that the actor was Irish uh, because they gave him a really thick Irish accent in the audiobook version, um, which is not at all how I'd read him in like all the times that I read those books growing up. So it was, it was jarring, but it was kind of fun. And now I sort of look at him and he's he's just got a really thick Irish accent. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, you also see a yeah. bunch of a bunch of other rebels on the Falcon, sort of actually manning the Falcon. Like they're running around, they're putting out fires, like they're, a submarine. They're fixing things, and yeah, it makes the the Falcon more of a a fighter craft, or at least yeah, as you said, a submarine. It's something that is used for war, not just for smuggling. Um, I gotta wonder what those guys are doing the rest of the time when they're not fixing stuff, um, or if they just knew, you know. We're gonna get shot up. You need we them need, on hand. Yeah, we need we need people on hand. You can't just rely on uh, nine numb. He's got to be doing his thing. Looking at Return of the Jedi, it's two hours and eleven minutes. I feel like they could have added some of this stuff back in. Two hours and eleven minutes in nineteen eighty three minutes though. So yeah, but I don't know because I think it's like a total of like ten minutes of stuff. Of the, Maybe of, a little bit less. I mean, this was this was nine minutes just of the the pilots. Um, well, I mean, I mean yeah, a you're lot not of it is all of that stuff. No, 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 no. and a lot right. of it is superfluous. So we get obviously they weren't too sure about the the creature effects on the Mon Calamari because there's a complete alternate version of. Yeah. Uh, basically, you got to imagine they shot all oh, of uh, Admiral Akbar's stuff where he's in command of the fleet, and it was uh, General Maydine. Yeah. Which I thought was, you know, that's why you've got Maydeen and uh, I wish. Akbar. Yeah, and I kind of wish they just had both. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my thing when I was watching the movie the other day. I was like, I love seeing and around the, the table there's a few different species and stuff like that. But and during the briefing room you see a bunch of different species in there. Um but yeah, when it gets to it, when you're seeing Home One join the battle, it is just Mon Calamari up in the the command deck, and you can sort of logic and justify it. It's like, well, they built the ships; they know the ships better than anyone else. Of course, they're going to be the people in command. It's yeah. Akbar and his probably handpicked crew. Fine, but it would be nice to have had um, made in like commanding something else like giving some orders yeah. to someone else the rest of the fleet or something trying to re like trying to reach the guys down on the ground because i always assumed that he was in like overall command of the ground battle and akbar is he's the fleet admiral so he's in control yeah. of the fleet um yeah I, I i liked it though it was interesting seeing it and you get to see the chair a lot more because you're not being distracted by the mon calamari everywhere you see sort of the yeah. swivel chair that he's on um Missed a couple of lines, or he his delivery wasn't the best on a couple of lines, so they went with the better option, and we got Akbar out of it. So I'm not going to complain. I, pref I think I prefer Akbar to Maidin anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And where's Mon Mothma? Yeah, she's I, I guess she's not in the battle. Did yeah? Did she stay behind at Sullust or something? Maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think I'd like to think at this point in the. She, she. I think she knows that this is their last bit, Jeff. She should probably be there or like go down fighting. 
Maybe. I maybe we'll find out. Yeah, maybe, maybe. we'll find out because I I feel like what is the 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 designated survivor like kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be because yeah. Leia's on the ground. Leia's in the battle. So mm-hmm. yeah, this I'm, is I'm thinking very much like, like this is General survivor. Leia. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, could be, could be. Um, not boss failure. We get the bunker. Yeah, got the bunker, which is for me is way better because the way it is in the movie, it almost looks like the doors on the outside open up to the room that they go in. It, like they just walk in, like go that. down some steps, and and go like that. So this, I was like, oh well, I wish they had a couple of shots of this that you mm, can like they had to fight their way through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we got the coverage. Like because... it was, this was an interesting one because we saw it from three different angles. We saw the the all the coverage of the same shot. Um, so you got right. to sort of after the first one, I was like, okay, cool. And then Han sticks his gun out again and takes that shot over there. And then the and guy goes down, picks up the bags. Fall. Yeah, this guy jumps over that guy, does the Finn move because Finn loves jumping but over what... dead bodies. Um, but what's great is, <laughs> what's great is. Is that, uh, I mean, you could just intercut this with any of the other action. Mm-hmm. And it also adds suspense to when he sets off the charges. Because they got to get out. Like, they got to get out. It's the same thing as the Millennium Falcon. Mm. They're inside the thing when they set the charges, when they, when it blows up. And they got to get out. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, didn't, I know they didn't show them running to get out. But I feel like, that, I don't know. That would have been yeah. Fun. And it, I noticed it when I was watching the movie on Sunday that, Han asks for the charges, gets the bag of charges, and then immediately throws the bag of charges to knock the guy over the railing um, into mm. like the reactor bit. I was like, I assume that the charges didn't go over the railing as well. <laughs> Otherwise, they're screwed. <laughs> um, or they've yeah. got more. Um, it, was, it was one of those things that when we were watching the movie, uh, Liz was just like, wait, hang on. Because you see the explosion in the bunker. And then you see the dish going up and it's such a bigger explosion um, that she was like, how are they all right? And I was like, no, 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 no. That dish isn't where they are. They they are that long tunnel that you see in the background is like a connected tunnel to the thing. It just sort of sets a chain reaction. Uh, they're pretty yeah. far away where they're their specific bunker. Right. Do we get an establishing shot? Is there a map painting of the bunker? When they're Not looking in... down with the with the when they're looking bunkers. down at it, I think you can see it, and you can see I think a different bunker when they first are approaching the the dish. Um, yeah. But I don't know the the geography of it doesn't really it makes sense for what it needs to make sense. But who cares? It's it's very much a, a who cares. I'm sure there was a lot of doors into that base. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an imperial facility, sort of under that entire area. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can. I can, I can sort of see it in my head. Out. It's when they they're first approaching. It. It's when the the Ewoks are like, "No, come this way. We've got a back door." Um, yeah, yeah. Back it's when they're like, "There's a lot of guards um, down there." Yeah, I maybe I should have gone to see it. I think it's still in theaters for a couple more days. That's cool. Um, probably until um, Guardians dropped. Um, we got. Yeah, we only tonight? had it. I yeah it would be yeah I think it is. Uh we only had it Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the UK. Um but it was nice they like they they showed it in the biggest best screen. So they, it wasn't sort of just relegated. It was pretty full too. It was it was quite busy, which was nice to see. Joe Yowza on the big screen again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. It's, it's really, really bad. bad. It's really, really I bad. I always I always I always skip I always skip. Jedi rocks every time. Mm. Uh, it's 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 awful. It's mm-hmm. so awful. I again, I think people would look back on Lopty Neck in the same way, probably now, but maybe mm-hmm. not with the effects. Like you, they'd probably go, "Oh, that music's a bit dated." This music's super dated as well, though. Like it was dated in '97. Um, yeah, it's it. I mean, at least with Lopty Neck, you have a consistent creature thing yeah. like at least at least size noodles looks like a puppet like everybody else looks like a puppet mm-hmm. but you just sort of like cover up the puppet with a cg person and like from like 1997 like pre-jar oh, jar banks yeah 
yeah and, and the way that it comes out it's like he was wanting to do it in a 3d thing it was like the gimmicky 3d um it looks more like an alien out of men in black which was also 97 than yeah it, it looks does. like mikey yeah yeah um yeah. it's yeah not good not good i would have been fine with them chucking in some background cg aliens and stuff like that if they wanted to mess around with some full cg characters um yeah. i kind of like the backing singers and things like that but like you can add bits into it but yeah changing it completely is still an unnecessary thing it's it's this movie's equivalent of jabba the hut in a new hope it's just right. an unnecessary change and the song's bad and the song is really bad um yeah yeah, yeah. oh well, that's that's the thing that we don't like about this um <laughs> Going back to the pilots, I just had a thought then. Um, I liked seeing the um, Sullustan and Moncal fighter pilots. I wish we'd seen those guys in the film. I don't know why we didn't. Uh, they looked fine. I thought they looked great, even on this sort of the, the bad prints that we could see. Um, I would have liked to seen them just again for the diversity of pilots uh, and to maybe again, got takes... a B-wing. Because I've always assumed that like one of them at least was in a b-wing so we would have seen a bit more b-wing they always use those shots like like they don't last much longer than like three seconds yeah exactly for each of those pilots like how how tough is it they just i don't know i guess they just weren't happy with them i don't know they look really good Mm, i thought so huh interesting yeah that's really weird who knows who knows um <laughs> yeah and there's no love for jedi rocks it's no, it's sorry, Matt. <laughs> it's bad i remember back in like 98 99 uh they released uh cd singles that had um like it, it was an album for figuring dan and the modal oh. notes and it was a single so it was like i don't know like five bucks or something like that and it came with both cantina songs okay great that's it but then they had the the size studios the max rebo band one and it had lofty neck but then it had jedi rocks and i was like oh man (laughs) did you get it anyway Mm, i don't think i did i think my friend i think my friend dylan got it okay but i was like i'm not i'm not giving it and the thing is i already had the cantina band songs on the 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 box set that they released a few years before yeah um Geek the fuck out says uh need more B-wings. Agreed. Uh yeah, be B-wings are cool. They you 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 barely see them. Do we get B-wings somewhere else? Did we just get recently get a B-wing? I think I mean there's B-wings in uh Rise of Skywalker. I think we finally see a B-wing. Um yeah. might see a B-wing in the Mandalorian, like when they're approaching. No, that's a Y-wing when they're approaching the cool beach base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not enough, not enough B-wing action. Um it would have been cool to see. Like you get that one shot of them when they're all sort of going into battle. That's the only bit of them flying, I think. Um, I always remember the the Tazos in '97 when they did the like the not not Pogs, the Tazos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that really good shot of like three B wings in action, and I was like, sweet, they're going to add some more stuff in there, um, and we're going to get some B wing fighter action, but yeah. nothing, nothing. Um, which was sad for 10 year old james but he got over it um yeah lego by ralph go check out ralph's um, if you ever need a logo for anything yeah hit me up hit me up um moff Gergerod. Gergerod. Yeah. yeah that was cool um it was nice to see him do more because he's a character that i like he's one of those imperial officers like piet that I like these guys as characters. I like getting sort of more time with them. And he stands up to Vader at one point or tries to um, outside. Why? Because of orders, because he doesn't want yeah. to deal with Palpatine. It's, it's a lot closer to um, like the, the relationship that Snoke and Hux had, where it's like, yeah. he'd, he'd go and talk to him on his own. He didn't need Kylo Ren there the whole time. Um, and he'd get his own set of orders and say, so, yeah, Jerjerod has been talking to the emperor and the emperor's like, I don't want to be disturbed, yada, yada, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see like the, the Royal guards as well. They're trying to kick Vader out. That also in the coloring book. Oh, cool. Okay. That's a, that's another one I can see. Couldn't find was that shot. 
of mm. of with their with their things i believe i believe that's that what it was. i think i've seen a still of of that of them holding it up and it's just them yeah it I probably made it into a tops playing card or, or a tops probably card or something. yeah i'm sure yeah. i'm sure at some point over the years like maybe a, a, a different set later on um yeah this it's cool it's pretty fun it is he's he's obviously he's been sort of trodden on and beat down by vader a, a fair bit as soon as he gets yeah. there but he is he's one of those imperial officers where it's like he's just trying to do his job and yes his job is shitty mm -hmm. but he is just yeah. trying to do his job and also based on the later scene he seems like he supports his men more than he supports yeah. like blowing stuff up like he likes his troop probably why the station isn't like finished because he has like i don't know like union mandated breaks for them all or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he's so concerned about like he says we have a couple battalions down there mm -hmm. um when when the emperor asks him to blow up the mood of andor mm -hmm. um i i mean i don't like according to the deleted scene like it's ready to go uh, yeah i mean i'm guessing that the because you got the guy counting down um but that would have been i would have thought into cut with the falcon in the falcon the, in the desert, and yeah. down on the the ground maybe like so that we're seeing some of the peril because that would have been when they they've blown up the base but we don't really see much of the ground stuff once they've blown up the the bunker yeah. it doesn't really cut down to that too much so maybe we would have seen some scenes of them not really realizing um what was about to happen or sort of winning the day down there and thinking that it's, they've done it it's funny because you start like you see these deleted scenes. You're like, oh, it would have been cool to see that, but then you realize, oh, we have seen that, like on Jetta. Exactly, like, we've seen the Death Star turn towards mm -hmm. the planet from the POV of the planet. We didn't get that with Alderaan, um, and so it's nice that we are. Oh boy, um, I can't, yeah. I can't exit okay. out. There's the the spam comment. I can't exit out. Yeah, um, if you can at least. That. At least, hopefully, people only the people on Twitch will see it. I don't think everyone else will see that one. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't don't. Twitch is just full of bots, isn't it? I don't know. We don't. Twitch really does not do Twitch anymore. I mean, I'm not bothered about it. If anyone if... does watch us on Twitch but just doesn't comment, please send us a message on Twitter um, and let us know that you'd be sad to see us stop streaming on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually offering chatbots <laughs> wow i'm gonna pop it up yeah <laughs> but it says it says chatbots over there yep right under you um yep. that's so weird mm -hmm. maybe we'll stop streaming on twitch i was thinking about well, it i was I, like if i was ever playing jedi survivor and i wanted to stream it i was like i just it straight to the youtube page i wouldn't build it with twitch twitch intimidates yeah. me i don't understand it i'm old leave that for yeah i wonder if your streamer has a setup where you can add I would have thought so. Maybe. An Xbox. I don't know. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to find out. Um, I want to play it through first anyway. But then the problem is YouTube, they 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 tend to knock stuff down if you're if you're playing copyrighted content. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So who knows? We'll look into it. We'll look into it. Potential yeah. for the future. Um but I think Molly and and Alex do that. Yeah. Everyone, I mean, like loads of people stream games. It's it's huge. Yeah, and I think they use Streamyard. I, I could be wrong. Mm. And no, they definitely do for some of their streams. Um, I yeah. I recognize the UI when I'm I, I watch some of their stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's Streamyard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do we have any other more deleted scenes? Uh, Jedrod feeling remorseful and like he does give yeah. the order to blow it up in the end. I, you got to assume that that is seconds before uh, the hero the of the rebellion Wedge Antilles does his thing, um, and yeah. then the Falcon comes and takes all the glory. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think Wedge. I think they both did it. They both did it. Yeah, it was the pl It looked like it was a plan. To yeah. do that yeah they needed uh, they needed to take out the the thing there the uh power converter like how many proton was. torpedoes does an x-wing hold who knows so he depends only takes on, out depends the, on what video game you're playing <laughs> yeah he only takes out the shield and then or he takes out the shield and the falcon uh, uh shield the, regulator isn't it the yeah. power the power regulator on the north side or whatever yeah um 
Yeah. But you, you get a guy like Wedge in there to hit that target. That's it. You got to do that. And I feel like it's a case of, you know, you, you throw your best people in there just so that if one of them gets shot along the way, you've got someone else to make the shot. I think if, if, if the Falcon hadn't made it, if it had been too tight for the Falcon, Wedge could have done that on his own. Wedge is fucking awesome. Wedge is great. I love Wedge. Wedge. I, from, from like, I love in Star Wars, how he's kind of like, Oh boy. I don't know if I could deal. He's like, Oh, he seems, he seems nervous. But even by the time you get to Empire, Empire. like he's already like, yeah, okay. I'm, it's I'm he's like, yeah, he's he's right years. there. Yeah, definitely. And then um, he's so confident in the. In he's, the he's 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 rogue leader. I mean, they're calling it Red Red Squadron at this point because of the like. I think I don't know. Again, this has all probably changed, but back. Um, <laughs> Lucha Johnny has just done done the Lord's work and gone over and checked, and there's no one on here um there's no one using twitch thank you lucha john okay. um we can ditch it um yeah co-host of uh geek the f out there you go um so yeah I, I, it's at this point in time like it is rogue squadron still like from the battle of hoth onwards um but they're calling themselves red squadron to honor the guys who died in the first death star uh which i always quite liked as a nice thing um, in the same way that you got like you got red, gold, green squadron, um, you know maybe maybe the B wings yeah. were blue squadron um, to honor the guys uh, Scarif. But... Scarif, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, that'd be great because the because the Moncal pilot was definitely in a different that's... cockpit. No, the the oh. the one in the deleted scene. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I was. So thought. he's probably in a B wing. So yeah, that'd be yeah. great. I've I've always assumed that that was a B wing, like whenever we've seen that, and I think the uh, B wings were a Mon Cal design. Um, makes sense; they're sort of quite. Can round. I just say, like, I think Admiral Radis is my favorite Mon Cal. I think you've said it before. Yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. He's he's a really really good character, and yeah, yeah, it's he's a great addition. Big fan of Radis. I think I want to bring up something about Rogue One at the very end of this episode. Okay. Uh, Radis is one of these guys who I'd like to see in Andor season two when we're at um, the Yavin base. Like he's someone that yeah. I could sort of see just being there in the same way that I want like uh, Merrick and a couple of the other rebel yeah, guys. I really want him. I really want um, him. In. Those are those are the sorts of cameos that we say all the time. It's like I don't want people force fed to me, but like when it makes sense for the story, and if they're gonna be at Yavin base. Mom Mothma makes sense. Mom Mothma uh, makes perfect sense. Bail Organa makes mm-hmm. sense, kind of. Yep. Um, uh, Hell, even yeah, Callus. Need... Callus, like, coming up, like, he would make sense if you're getting, like, really close because after his turn, we know that he's operating out of there as well. And with, yeah. uh, like, Alliance uh, Intelligence, which, again, all makes sense. Did Callus die in Rebels? No. Callus survives. Callus okay. uh, and Zeb are hanging out together, and we know that Zeb's still kicking it afterwards, so... Callus is out there somewhere. Eddie Pence wants that job. Yeah, okay, Eddie. He looks he looks like him. Mm-hmm. Get those chops. We're watching as I said, um, we're watching Rebels at the moment, and uh Liz doesn't know that Callus turns, so she sees him and she's like, oh that guy. And I'm just like so you know Eddie, who we've had on the show, we're trying to get him as a live action Callus, but without giving away the the twist of Callus. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have much more to say about the deleted scenes. I kind of wish they were all in, just because I'd like to see a longer cut. Yeah, all in. I mean, you'd I would. I mean, you want can even them trim. You can even trim Ewok gags or some Ewok stuff, and bring in that. Yeah. Um, trim I mean, down. You'd, you'd, trim you'd down. Lose... Fucking Joe Yowza, Jedi Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trim that trim right down. That down. Um. Yeah, I but would. I want, still want to see a live this, action. I wouldn't want the um, the sandstorm and them flying away because that has the same problem then as my problem with Jabba in A New Hope, which is it's redundant. The Jabba scene is the same as the Greedo scene, like for what you get. Right. So it's one or the other. Um, right. And as we've said in this, like it does make m- it more of a dynamic scene having the the sandstorm. Yes. And I'm, I like Han's delivery of. I'm thinking I owe you one as opposed to just, I owe you one. Yeah. I like that. He's it's him 
and he's having a private it's moment. Great with seeing Luke. them together outside of the Falcon. Like it's sort yeah. of there. Like it happens in. Like it, it connects them. It connects them. Like mm-hmm. the first, the Falcon in the beginning. What a piece of junk. And then they're they're leaving the Falcon <clears throat> for yeah, Luke to moment. go to Dagobah. Yeah. It's like the it's the moments that you that you they get they get one of these the moments in each film though like it's it's the yeah. Luke saying goodbye to Han is like I really thought he'd stay like it's that yeah it's the take care of yourself Han it's then Han calling Luke back and saying may the force be with him on Echo Base and then yeah. this moment it's the I'm thinking I owe you one um, so because it's a private moment between the two of them. As opposed to right. he's putting it out on the channel and everyone sat around the same cockpit. Yeah. Yeah. I like it so much more. It's cool. It is cool. I really like to see all this stuff in. Just to just to just to watch it. I'm sure there's some fan cut out there. Yeah. I'm sure Topher uh, Grace has done it. But um one of the things I noticed while he's building the lightsaber yeah. was I, I it's funny how you think of like the Jedi and it's like mysticism and i know when they like construct lightsabers in the clone wars it's like floating pieces and you have mm-hmm. to use the force to get everything in tune but with luke he had like a screwdriver and okay. and he was very very uh technical which i liked because um connects to ray like, I don't, yoda didn't tell him how no one to told him how. he yeah he would have read it in some Where, books like i think that was yeah. in it was in Shadows of the Empire back when that was the sort of the story in between these two. And he's mm. in, um, it's a book in Obi-Wan's hut that he's reading about lightsaber construction. But he's also shit scared to turn it on because he doesn't know if he's got everything right. And this thing could blow up like in his hand. Yeah. It's, it's a weapon that if he turns it on and he's not connected something right, it blows up, he's dead, like party's over. And he's, he's, he has a genuine worry about that. I'm hoping this is the kind of stuff we see in that new movie coming out, supposedly about the first Jedi. If there's That'd some cool. film coming out about the first Jedi, um, cool. I feel like a lightsaber construction scene. We got to get one. It, it's driving it's me the, nuts. If it's the but first I, Jedi, you got to think, hopefully we see the first lightsaber. Like maybe they right. are just using staffs or things like that beforehand and so they they translate that they they feel the call, they find some kyber crystals or something. You know um, what I want? Go on. Wood. Yeah. I want a wooden lightsaber. And I want it, I want it to be purely, I want it to be like a kyber crystal in wood that's completely using the force to power it. Wow, that'd be cool. It's like a like not a mechanical thing. Mm. It's it makes it more mystical. Mm, definitely. It and before that, mystical. they were just using the the wood as a staff weapon, sort of thing, or like, something. Yeah. And then it's 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 basically powering up that staff weapon to be yeah lightsaber. That'd be very cool. I'd like it. And it sort of yeah. feels Arthurian as well, which they've said like it, they want sort of some Arthurian legend, yeah. um, that sort of feel to but, that feel. That'd but that's cool. what I like about Luke making his own lightsaber using a screwdriver and stuff. It's like, <laughs> it's like you know. It shows again yeah. that the force doesn't have to be one thing. It's it's uh it's um it's Qui Gon believing in the living force and yeah. Obi Wan believing in the cosmic mystical force. force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it I like that it's this sort of I don't know. It could be anything. It doesn't have to exactly. be. No one has the answers on the force. It doesn't have to be so dogmatic. There's no, there's no clear cut. This is the force. No. It's we know it exists. Yep. It's a thing, uh, but it's okay to believe whatever you believe. Different. That's why Jedi understand what it is. Yeah, Jedi um, uh, is really great uh, in the High Republic novels and stuff. There's been a lot of stuff on Jedi, and it's it's a con. It's a cover cave of force believers. But not all Jedi. Like the the Jedi are, have quite a presence there. But there is a like a a, is there a, like council. a council of different exactly that. There's a council, no. and it's it's super interesting because some of them are like fully light. Most of them are fully light. There's one or two that they do touch on the dark side, and they're kind of like the others look at them with a bit of a side eye because there's no Sith at this point. The Sith are thought extinct, yeah. um. So they're not too worried about that. But they're like, 
mm, you guys, we don't really like how you're using that. We are worried that that could lead to some bad stuff, but you are a force user. You're, you're like, you're welcome here. Just, you know, having conversations. It's like having a meeting of religions. Like, it's exactly that. It's having a meeting of religions and going, this is all cool. We can all be cool. Um, need, and then, and then of course, to... you get the, the zealot tree of a particular religion who are like the bad guys of this bit of the High Republic um, who come in and mess everything up because they believe the force shouldn't be used and manipulated. I need uh, some sort of... I really don't like reading. But no. like stuff like this I want to know about and I think is super awesome, but I don't want to read like I, phase I, two of the high republic to you know <laughs> weed all this shit out i just i wish it was there's was just a better way to present this stuff to me um and they keep balking on these movies and it's like oh you know, this is stuff that could happen mm. um uh and i think that's why I like andor is because it really gets in the nitty-gritty of things yeah of how this shit works and, and, and how the rebellion was coming together and everything. It's great. Why I don't gravitate towards the Mandalorian as much because it's not that. It's not how things work. It's more about the adventure and action. Yeah. Um, you but, get a little uh, bit of stuff in there uh, with Mandalorian. I find it, I find it, yeah, I find it frustrating because it's like there's so much cool stuff that could be that. Like the, the nitty yeah. gritty of mandalorian or of like how the stuff on coruscant was happening all of the new republic side of things like i I want the nitty-gritty of all of that not so much but again there's a bit of star wars hopefully hopefully ahsoka is like is like the 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 andor it doesn't have to be as dense as andor but something similar that has to do with jedi because we're going to get ezra we're going to get ahsoka we're probably going to get the world between worlds the purgle and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and that's all great in uh rebels but hopefully we can like expand on some of this jedi stuff that i want that'd be cool that'd be cool um yeah this this i mean the thing is like that one is fully just Dave only like running the show so and he he digs into that stuff when he can with the animated stuff so We'll see. We'll see. Um, I I like Tales that of the a, Jedi. A different... I want a tale of the, the Jedi season or series that has like this council of Jedi That'd be that believe awesome. in different things. Set, like, just set during do, the High just... Republic, one of like give me uh, Elzar Man, Tales of the Jedi, three episodes about Elzar Man or someone else from the High Republic, like um, Keith Trennis going to Jeddah and hanging out there. Like, do it. That'd be great. Open up. Open up with the shot of the first Death Star and 1977 uh, X Wings and Y Wings and TIE Fighters and the Millennium Falcon uh, taking out the Death Star. And then pull back into space where you see a timeline. That's and a then great you, way see, you see little moments everywhere. And then you push in to whatever timeline it is. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is either way before Star Wars, way after Star Wars, and do that anthology series where you literally see in space a timeline. And I know there's a book called Timelines coming out, or it's out. It's up um, But just have, I'm sure I see that there's like graphs and it's grids. Infographic and Central. It's beautiful. I love but, that book. But just do, do a visual, like just start in space. Start with Luke Skywalker and the Millennium Falcon and just pull back as mm-hmm. it explodes. As it ex- explodes, it creates oh, a, right. t- a literal timeline in space. Well, and it then can you be... push it to wherever you want in there and you get that story. Here's a it's, little moment. It's Ray opening one of the sacred Jedi texts and you, you yeah. blow into it. And then, yeah, you're just getting some of these stories. But um, let's do like, like, I, I like visually, you can start on the star field. Yeah. 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 It's, it's right there. Um, make it happen yeah um it'd be good and like i mean you could you it can easily sort of figure out your place in time with jedda because the statue is down or the statue is up um the statue comes down in these books in the high republic um and that's sort of yeah of course if you're yeah. gonna show it yeah, you're gonna yeah, show yeah. it and you're gonna have the moment and all of that but it makes sense for the story which is great and it's it's a big moment in the history of jedda um yeah but having having that statue be upright super cool and then you see everything else that's going on around it 
Um, you get the Guardians of the yeah. Wills. Like, there's loads of stuff with the Guardians of the Wills in the comics and stuff at the moment. Um, you see what they were all about. They, were, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, Jamie Kelly here as a historian loves a good timeline, dude. If you haven't got that book already, get it. Like, it's blind buy. Just it's it's really really fun. Man, we um, keep making Jeremy buy books. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll fly through it in like 20 minutes. So <laughs> um, it's good. It's really, really nice. Um, I don't have anything else. I think we're looking at time. That's, either. That's Next week, we're going to have a data link episode. And we think it's to round up of, catch all. Yeah, catch all. Um, talk a little bit about for some reason, Survivor. Talk about um, for some reason tomorrow visions. there might be a lot of Star Wars news. I don't know why. But it yeah, it's weird that they didn't do it as a celebration. You'd have thought that all that stuff could have just been dropped then, but yeah, right. well, well. Um, it's, then it's in a two fun... weeks. Yeah. Yeah. What we got? In two weeks is our next regular episode mm-hmm. um, that'll appear on our audio podcast streams and here on YouTube. Um, we are going to be talking about the Return of the Jedi documentary, which I have never seen before. Oh, I don't think I have either. If it's the one I've I never it seen is. this, it's called Star Wars Classic Creatures. And uh, as soon as as soon as we uh, put out the announcement on YouTube for this, we'll have a link in the bio for or in the in the description below for you to uh, find that and watch it. I think it's forty two minutes or forty five minutes, so okay. about the length of an episode of Andor. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, presented by uh billy d williams oh awesome that's always I fun think he, yeah i think he's the he's the narrator like uh the way mark hamill is for from star wars to jedi and i've never seen this so apparently it's just called star wars classic creatures from 1983 and it's created after return of the jedi or around the time of return of the jedi so um check that out we'll have a guest yes. um charlie brigden uh film uh film on wax Mm-hmm. um who's who's a who's a devotee of cue the music my other podcast and, and if uh, we go long we can go long on that one because i don't have to rush off to work yeah which is nice and what's great is charlie's in your time zone that so we're gonna have great. a couple of a couple of brits on the show which is great uh, last so time we had that i think, time. I know last time we had that was uh with samuel victor which was it was all good so yeah oh yeah i, I did i was thinking about samuel when uh, i was watching some of these scenes because he mentioned that he he filmed more than is in rogue one he couldn't tell us exactly what uh but he could tell us that he had a helmet so it makes me think that he maybe had some of these sorts of scenes as well but in rogue one. Oh yeah yeah so, we yeah yes give us give us more pilots from rogue one per con, pure conjecture on our part. absolutely we have no idea if that's true or not. um and then speaking of rogue one good movie i'm currently doing a documentary about lost mm-hmm and uh, tomorrow, um, for no reason, don't don't it has nothing to do with the date. But there's a connection with the show Lost and Rogue One, and we're making an announcement tomorrow. Um, you might be able to figure that out. And if you think, if you look hard enough, um, we're making an announcement tomorrow, um, and and it's a little bit more than you think. It's a little bit more than you think with this announcement. Um, so head over to at getting lost doc. Even if you're not a fan of lost, um, go check it out. Uh, it's yep. going to be uh, really cool because there's more than more. There's more to announce than just uh, this thing. Um, and then also um, go watch lost. You have plenty of time before the movie comes out. I'm doing it. Watch lost. He's doing a rewatch. I'm going to start today. I'm gonna start doing awesome. rewatch today. That's so great. um so check that out at getting lost doc. Shall I shall I start tweeting out uh like a I'll just do a, a one long thread of Ed, his girlfriend Lucy, and Liz is like one or two line reactions to each episode. I've been writing them all down as as we go through. Ed and Lucy are way further ahead than Liz is. Um, but I can start tweeting. I've seen right. a few. You sent me a few, they're great. They are fun. Yeah, fun. I'll have to make sure they're all appropriate, but yeah, they're all they're all very fun. So yeah, um, check that out. Awesome. Uh, Come back, follow uh, us yeah. on YouTube, um, and be back for the date link next week. Um, we want yeah, loads of people involved in chatting about all the things. Uh, Star Wars Visions, Young Jedi Adventures, Jedi Survivor. That timeline. New Visions out. 
Uh, it will be on Friday or maybe maybe tomorrow. I don't know. It's out this for week. For some reason. Yeah, probably yeah. tomorrow. For some reason. Probably. I think yeah, it is for tomorrow. Reason. For some reason. I don't get it. I don't get it, dude. We'll get it. <laughs> We've done it. We've done it in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, until next week though everybody uh don't give in to hate ralph celebrate the love ralph <laughs> punch it okay but here well hold on, hold on. <laughs> we need to coordinate coordinate this may 25th uh uh episode i think we're doing with patrick uh, okay can we do that so, offline <laughs> uh, yeah 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 because yeah. may 25th okay, cool. what a yeah. great day it's a great day that is a proper star wars day <laughs> All right. Celebrate the love. <laughs>